today's story continues. Where is it? Illustrates what was shared yesterday of why at Sadiq's prayer is heard. And not that another person's is not, but, and of course, there are exceptions to everything. But the Nakuda was, but for the Tzaddik, it's Negea, Mamish Negea. Whereas for a person, he, even his request for money, whatever, if he's drowning, it's not going to, it won't even occur to him that he needs money. He'll abandon it. But for the Tzaddik, a Yid's need is Negea Betzen and Nefesh. So here's an interesting story. So this, uh, I think was, his name was Dov, uh, Dov Ber, the Rebbe of Hardestopel, his great-grandfather of the Baitwerski. So when he was a child, he was orphaned at a, at a young age, and he was raised by his grandfather, the Cherkasi, the Rebbe of Cherkasi. So he married the Mitzvah Rebbe's daughter. Once, one of the Chassidim came to, to the Cherkasi, and asked him to pray for you for Yeshua, which was which was he hadn't earned enough to meet payments on the inn and the dwelling in which he was renting from the feudal lord. And the latter threatened him with expulsion and imprisonment if his arrears were not promptly resolved. He could see no source of help. And he came to the Rebbe for divine mercy, to pray for divine mercy, so they shouldn't languish in prison. To his horror, he finds out that the Rebbe is out of the city. So he approaches the Rebbe with his bitter plight, and she says, go to the Bisa Medrash and talk to my Enoch or my grandson. He, he, but he may be able to help you. But the Chassid said he's only a child of 10. I need, I need the Rebbe. Our lives are in jeopardy. She says, the Rebbe is not here. Go to my, to my grandson. Okay. So he goes to the Bisa Medrash, the 10 year old, this 10 year old, the hardened stuff was, was uh, learning. And against his better judgment, he unburdens himself to the, to the, young, to the young boy who listens sympathetically to the man's tearful tale. He sighs deeply and said, If only Zayda were here, I'm sure he could help you. There's nothing I can do for you. And in desperation, he says, The man says to me, But your baba, your grandmother sent me to you. Now, if you really can't help me, I don't hold a grudge against you, against you. But if you can, and you're refraining, then I will never be able to forgive you for what you're doing to my family. Not I won't forgive you in this world, I won't forgive you in the next world. So the young boy, he's shaken here in this. He slowly closes the Gemara and says, okay, let's first go to the Mikvah. So he accompanies him to the Mikvah, and stood by as the, he's immersing himself. After a few moments, the man becomes concerned. The child is not coming out of the water. And then a few moments passes further, far beyond what seemed to be the human endurance for surviving without air. Now he's panic stricken. He tries to go into the mikveh, but if he gets paralyzed, he can't move. So he forget about his troubles, his being in arrears and his imminent eviction uh, or imprisonment. He was occupied with his child whose head is... Abish to pray, just let me see this child immerse from the mikveh life. And what seemed to be not one, but, but many eternities, the young boy emerged from the water and he says, go home, you have nothing to worry about. Several weeks later, the Chassi returned to the, to the Rebbe and the Chakasi was back in his, in his back in Yosef and told him that when he came home, the feudal lord had sent him and apologized for being so harsh on him. What happened was the previous night, the feudal lord related, he developed a choking sensation, was unable to breathe. In his panic, he began to reflect, perhaps he was being punished by God, being so ruthless with his, with his tenants. And he resolved that henceforth to be more lenient. And then his breathing returned to normal. So the feudal lord had said to this, I will not only forgive 
you with your arrears, but also arrange more liberal terms for your future payments. So that had heard this, he shook his head sadly. Hearing the whole story, he said, this is too tender an age for him to place his life in jeopardy. But this was the Rebbe. So when he said later, it was 50 years later, when he, when he explained that when the Rebbe asked, it's, he's asking Mamashud and Siddhas Nefesh above everything, he knows of what he spoke. This is a story with him when he was 10 years old. It's been a wonderful day.